Ancient Greece is one of the most fascinating places in history because of the plethora of interesting stories and complete craziness that occurred during its supremacy. One of the locations in Greece that seemed to be filled with these crazy occurrences will be none other than that of Sparta. Sparta is an iconic piece of history with it being portrayed many times in Hollywood with movies like The 300. These movies don't shy away from showing the more ludicrous traditions and practices like throwing unfit children off a cliff to their deaths. But one of the most fascinating topics I found when learning about Sparta is that of their tendency for both the men and women to train in the nude among each other. Something like this seems unimaginable in today's society, as well as unthinkable in any other city-state in ancient Greece. They trained naked with each other for many practical reasons, and this decision also had a lasting impact on the social structure of the society, and most importantly, influenced the rights and abilities of the Spartan women, which in turn helped push outdated views of what women should do and be into a progressive state. Spartan society, the most important thing to them was their military might and strength, with them being a community of warriors, with nearly every decision they make for their children and how they are raised having the sole focus of molding them into the strongest they can possibly be. And this all starts with who is reproducing with who. Because Sparta's goal was to make the strongest children, they needed to follow every little chance that could possibly provide it. And this begins with making sure that the best of the best reproduced with each other at the best time. They sought that the most physically gifted men and women marry and reproduce during, during their prime of their lives, with men around the age of 20 and women around the age of 18, because it would be better for the offspring. If an older wealthy man wished to marry a younger woman in Sparta, it was still possible, but it had rules that needed to be followed. The most important being that the older man was required to find another man that was in his prime, whose mind and body he respected, to have children with his wife to produce the most viable offspring for Sparta. Another thing Spartans practiced in an attempt to create the strongest children was that of abstinence. Now, not the modern sense of abstinence, that is, of having no sex at all, but rather limiting the amount of sex a man and woman could have. They believed limiting intercourse would increase the men and women's desire to have sex, so when a child was born out of this increased sexual desire, they would be stronger than a child born from intercourse where the man and woman lacked desire because of how often they had sex. To force this abstinence, Spartan society forced men, while they trained, to live in barracks with only other men, rather than living in a household with their wife, while also pushing the belief that it was a disgrace for a man to be seen leaving or approaching his wife's home. These things that Spartans did leading up to giving birth to offspring was extremely vital, but this was only the beginning. To truly create a warrior for Sparta, the children once born would need to be trained and hone not only their bodies, but their minds in the art of combat, honor, and loyalty to Sparta. Sparta put such a precedence on creating new warriors that the children began training at extremely young ages. For the able-bodied male children at the age of seven, they would be introduced to the state's education system, the agogi where they would stay until they turned 18. And for the women, once they turned seven, they began their training and education with their mothers. In Spartan society, women were expected to train and exercise the same amount as the men, and this led to many competitions and exercises against each other. And here is where one of the most peculiar practices of Sparta comes into play, doing these competitions fully naked. They did this for practical as well as more philosophical reasons. Practically, they train naked for cleanliness, which I know seems counterintuitive. Before beginning training, both the men and women would cover themselves head to toe in oil. The sweat and dirt that they got on them during the training would then be captured in the oil, so when they were done, they could just scrape off the oil and jump into a bath to finish washing up. They also believed that this would help clean their pores better. Also, training naked allowed it where they wouldn't have to clean their dirty clothes. Another practical reason why men and women train naked was to better prepare their bodies for extreme forms of weather and terrain. They would go barefoot to toughen the skin on their feet in preparation for marches in the military, 
and strengthen their bodies through extreme hots and colds that they would also experience during future military campaigns. But more fascinating than the practical reasons why they trained naked was the more philosophical reasons why they did it. There was no shame for the boys and girls to be naked together because when everyone would be new together, they became accustomed to seeing everything and knowing what all the organs were for. He actually recommended that children below the age of seven to go around naked playing by mothers and caretakers because they wanted to accustom their kids to this practice. This also influenced both the men and women to push themselves in their exercises and enthusiastically work on their bodies as they push themselves to become the fittest and healthiest of their peers comparing their bodies to one another. Because the boys and girls were kept separate for majority of the time, with the boys in the gogi living in the barracks and the girls living at home, both the men and women looked forward to these competitions and festivals as it gave, as it gave them a chance to view the other sex and decide who they wished to marry and have children with. In Sparta, women had an unfound amount of freedom, an opportunity that wasn't seen anywhere else in ancient Greece and even ancient Rome. The common belief during this time was that the woman's life and duty should be running the household and raising children, with women's decisions being dictated by either their husband or the male head of the household. Women had nearly no freedom, but in comparison to the rest of ancient Greece, Sparta was by far and away the most progressive location for women. We have already discussed how women in Sparta were held to the same standard for education and fitness as males to make sure that the children born would be the strongest possible. Another main freedom that women had in Sparta was the ability to choose who they wished to marry and have kids with. Usually in ancient Greece, the father would choose who the daughter married. Sometimes that could be a family member like an uncle or a wealthy member of the community. But in Sparta, evidence shows that the men and women could choose who they wished to marry rather than having someone else decide, with usually men and women seeking marriage to have strong, healthy offspring rather than marrying for status or wealth. In Sparta, top-tier men and women could choose to marry and have kids with a lower-tier Spartan if they so desired, because in their eyes, even the worst Spartan was vastly better than anyone from any place in Greece or the world. Another huge change in Sparta was how the household was run. In most Greek city-states, when a woman gets married, she moves to the husband's home where he teaches her how he expects the household to be ran. But in Sparta, it is the opposite. Men married at the age of 20 while women married at the age of 18. Following this, men were expected to live in the barracks and complete their military duty for another 10 years until they were 30. So it was the woman's job to run the household and the children while the husband was away. And women's roles in the household were different as well, for they weren't required to spend their day doing tasks like cooking or mending clothes, as it was believed that the house slaves were capable of doing this. The woman's job of the household was more to manage it and the people inside of it, and this didn't change when the man turned 30 and could live in the household, for the man's job after turning 30, if he survived, would be becoming an officer in the military with his sole purpose fighting for the protection of Sparta, meaning he would have to follow the instructions of his wife while he was in the household. These privileges that women received in Sparta were unfathomable in most societies of the ancient world. Sparta is unquestionably one of the most progressive locations for women in all of the ancient world, and this brought on by their focus on creating a warrior culture. And while Sparta was far from perfect, it did begin to send to motion the acceptance of women and their greater integration into society.